Hi there and welcome to this video for Senior Physics on Astrophysics. In this last video we're going to explore the idea of gravitational fields and how this has an effect the further out we go from the Earth's surface into space. So basically what we've got here is a representation of the Earth where we've got um, our gravitational fields which are centred into the, into the centre of the Earth. Now the thing is what we need to ex um, experience or explore is what happens to a mass the further out we go from the Earth's surface. Now this makes um, pertinent sense when we deal with things like satellites and putting a satellite above the, um, the, the atmosphere and wanting it to actually circle the Earth. So what we notice is that the closer the lines are to the, um, to the Earth, and you can see that right on the surface, the stronger the gravitational field is going to be against them. So you can see the further you go out, the, um, the wider the field lines go, which means the, you get a decrease in that um, magnetic, in that um, gravitational field. So what we've got to understand is if we're going to put a satellite in space, we've got to work out what height are we going to do and as a result what is going to be the force of gravity which is going to apply upon it. Now if you watched the previous video we understood that we had to have a, um, a critical velocity which is required in order to um, get the satellite to actually move through space and keep it in a circular orbit. So it's important to know what's the strength of the force of gravity acting on that object at that specific height. So obviously depending on the size of the planet um, it will determine the size of the um, gravitational forces which are going to be um, applied upon it. The bigger the planet the bigger the gravitational field. So our biggest planet in the, in the solar system Jupiter is going to have field lines which are going to be a lot closer together. The moon however doesn't have a specifically um, large gravitational field basically because it's a lot smaller. As a result the field lines are further apart and that's why when we see photos and film of Neil Armstrong walking on the moon he's actually bouncing over it because the field lines are not grabbing, grabbing hold of him as a mass and pulling him down as strongly as you would if you were on the surface of the earth. So we can actually um, determine what's going on depending on the different planet surface. Now obviously if we're going to look at space exploration we need to know what those gravitational fields are like. Now here's a representation of a rocket and you can see that relative to Earth we've got a certain um, number of field lines. In this case we've got five field lines acting on that Australian rocket there. Now if we went to the moon we'll see that the number of field lines is going to be a lot less. We've got one from five to three so we can see that the gravitational force is less on the moon than it is on Earth which means that we're going to um, spend more time in the air if we're jumping but likewise if we go to Jupiter you can see that we've almost doubled the size of the um, number of magnetic field lines per specific area. So as a result we can see that the gravitational field strength for um, Jupiter is going to be a lot larger than we're going to get on Earth. Now obviously we're only dealing with Earth at the moment but that the further you go out what we're noticing is that those field lines are going to get further apart. So what we need to be able to do is to be able to calculate our gravitational field strength at any specific point. Now our gravitational field strength G is the acceleration due to gravity on, the, on an object. Now as we know as we go further out G is going to decrease. Currently on the, on the surface of the planet G is going to be 9.81 meters per second per second but as we move away that's going to get less and less and less. As we say the bigger FG is the bigger the acceleration on an object so we can't get any closer to the surface of the um, to the center of the Earth, so the result is um, we're we're experiencing probably our maximum g, our maximum acceleration at this point in the atmosphere and on the surface of the Earth. But obviously, the further out we go beyond the atmosphere, g is going to decrease. That's why you almost feel weightless in space. As a result, um, we're going to decrease our field strength. Um, this value can be calculated if we know the mass of the object in relation to the gravitational field and it's done in the following way. Basically we know that Fg equals GME m where me is going to be the mass of the earth and the little m is going to be the mass of the object relative to it. Um, and that's all over the inverse square law with respect to um, distance from the object. Now that distance obviously will incorporate the um, radius of the earth. 
We also know that a mass basically will have a weight force, weight force equaling mg. Now what we can do is we can combine both of these um, forces together, our gravitational force and our weight force. So we get Fg equals Fw. Now when we put the two equations together, we get gme little m divided by d squared equals mg. Now we can cancel out our little m's, so that gets rid of the mass of the object relative to the Earth. So we now know that um, all we're going to be looking at here is what is the acceleration g based on the distance that we are from the Earth's surface. So remember we've got our gravitational constant, that's our big G, we've got the mass of the Earth, which we know, all that's going to change is the distance that we are from um, the Earth's surface. So we get an equation which will allow us to work out gravitational field strength, g me divided by d squared. And that's the calculation that we're going to utilize along with our critical velocity to determine what, um, what velocity we've got to give for a um, satellite which is put in space at a specific height above the Earth's surface. So let's have a look at a quick example. Here we've got ME. Um, now we've got a one kilogram mass which is, which is centered on the surface of the Earth. Now the surface of the Earth is 6,400 kilometers, which is basically um, 6,400 um, times 10 to, the, 10 to the 3 meters. Okay, that way we've got our, um, we've taken it into our meters. We also know um, our gravitational um, constant, and as I say, we already know our mass. So we can work out on the surface of the Earth what the acceleration due to gravity is. So we can substitute it into our formula. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 is our g, our gravitational field constant. Our, um, We've then got our mass, 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, that's the mass of the planet. And we've also got our um, diameter, which basically is our distance that we're going to be traveling, not our diameter, our distance that we are from the center of the Earth, which is 6.4 times 10 to the 6. Now, so that's our distance, and we're going to square that. What we find is, when we put all that together, that one kilogram mass is going to experience an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. So that's where our 9.81 came from. We were looking at the effect of a one kilogram mass acting on the surface of the Earth, which is 6,400 kilometers away from the center, with a gravitational constant of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Now what we notice is the further that we go out, we follow what's known as an inverse square law. And this was put forward by Newton. Now literally what it shows is a graph that looks like this. So the further we go out, we basically square the distance so we're going to actually decrease the amount of force which is going to be um, generated by 1 over d squared. And that's what the inverse square law means. Now we've uh, um, faced this in a, a variety of different things. When we looked at um, electromagnetic fields, um, when we're looking at electrostatics, we had exactly the same scenario. The further a charged particle went from um, another charged particle, the electric field strength actually decreased following this 1 over d squared rule. We also had exactly the same with electromagnetism. When we had a um, magnetic field of, that was generated by either a magnet or um, a current carrying wire, the further we moved away from that object, it followed again the, the force or the, electric field, um, the magnetic field strength decreased by 1 over d squared. So we follow this rule all the time. Now basically what we notice is that if we, can, um, if we were to look at a variety of different um, situations from Earth's center, we can basically work out the size of the forces which are generated. So this table shows that. You can see in the, in the middle column that if we are a distance zero from the Earth's surface, we've got an acceleration of gravity by 9.81. Notice that our distance from the center is 6,400 kilometers. However, if we were to go um, and increase our distance, say let's, let's go down to the very bottom, which is 13,590. So we're 13,590 um, off the surface. We've got to add to that the, um, the radius of the Earth, which is 6,400 kilometers. So that gives us a total distance of 19,990 from the, set, the Earth's center our acceleration due to gravity would only be one meters per second per second. That's actually less than what you find on the, on the moon. 
So I hope you found that useful. Um, hopefully we can, um, you can actually uh, practice this a little further by doing some of the exercises that I've got linked to this post. So thanks for watching and I look forward to meeting you again. Bye for now.